South Era FM News Service. Welcome to Wednesday, October 4th. We invite you to listen to the news from the country and the world. The theologian from the German Bochum, Thomas Sodding, suggests that papal decisions should be consulted with an advisory council that includes lay people. He believes that the church needs a change in the decision-making process given the current crises. During the upcoming synod session, he anticipates discussions and proposals rather than establishing dogmas. He notes a positive change in relations between Germany and the Vatican and the significance of the synodal process in Germany, where women will have the right to vote for the first time. Sodin emphasizes the need to focus on this process and believes in its effectiveness. The Canadian government has allocated $15 million to support the Central Mennonite Committee. The organization will use the funds for aid campaigns in Zimbabwe, focused on women's and girls' environments. The project also aims to assist over 48,000 residents in three districts who have experienced losses related to ecosystem changes. Thelma Sadzamari reports that the initiative will be implemented in collaboration with local partners and universities in Canada and Zimbabwe. Italy has undertaken the reconstruction of the historic center of Odessa, destroyed by Russia. The declaration was signed by the Italian Prime Minister, Antonio Targioni, who pledged Italy's assistance in construction and reconstruction. In July, Russian attacks destroyed important sites in Odessa, which was condemned by UNESCO. During the 27th European Christian Internet Conference in Cologne, communication specialists from various European churches debated the challenges and opportunities associated with the church's activities in the digital world. The main topic of the conference focused on the adaptation of churches to modern technologies and their role in digital media. At the 20th European Religious Programs Festival in Berlin, films from different European countries were awarded. The most significant awards went to productions from France, Germany, and the Netherlands. The festival was an opportunity to discuss the role of religion in the media, considering the current trends of secularization in Europe. Agnieszka Godfrejatano-Gorska, a spokeswoman for the Evangelical Augsburg Church in Poland, participated in organizing the festival. Over 230 communication and IT specialists from Asia gathered for the Gain Asia Conference in South Korea. The meeting focused on training in mission and evangelism using new technologies. Among other things, an artificial intelligence system translating religious messages into various languages was presented during the conference. Pastor Williams Costa emphasized the importance of technology in evangelization in Asia, where Christians are a minority. At the exhibition in front of the town hall in Mlawa, historical documents, including medieval ones from various branches of the state archives in Poland, are displayed. The oldest of them is the foundation of a monastery from 1153. The exhibition was organized by the local branch of the State Archive and includes papal, royal, and monastic documents. Some of the documents are listed on the UNESCO list. The exhibition lasts until October 13. During the search for a lost earring in the garden, the Norwegian Arsvik family discovered Viking-era artifacts dating back to the 9th century. Using a metal detector, they found a buckle and a mysterious object that likely belonged to an ancient burial ceremony. Experts confirmed the historical value of the finds, pointing out their unique significance for Jomfraland Island. The Mazowiecki Specialist Hospital in Radom has introduced dog therapy for young patients. The therapy dog will regularly visit the pediatric and child surgery wards, supporting young patients in their recovery. The program was implemented in cooperation with Mars Pulskar and Dr. Clown Foundation. Such initiatives have been active in Poland for six years. Experts confirm the benefits of dog therapy, highlighting its positive effect on stress reduction and patient condition improvement. That's all in today's Safira FM News Service. We're glad you're with us. May God bless us all.